Hey there, this is OneUp Indie here coming with another video tutorial on remaking Vampire Survivors in GameMaker. This is the fifth part and today we're gonna do what you basically seeing on the screen is throwing some weapons and by basically the weapon spawning and in a simplified way. Of course, there are, let's call it better ways to do that, but this is quite easy to adapt and control. So therefore, we're gonna do that right now. So if you wanna join me, stick around. This is One Up Indie. I am a developer. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, why don't you consider sharing, liking, and subscribing to the channel? Of course. So for quick explanations, basically what we're gonna do is create two alarms, and then after the alarm runs out, we spawn one thing, or we spawn the other thing. And then, for example, the interesting part about this uh, well, slash is it needs to follow the player. So, for example, if you slash and then the player goes to the right, then it would look kind of silly. And of course, this dude needs to go in a specific arc. So, uh, it needs to go in a specific arc, something like this. And then, and then, of course, we need to give it some gravity. So, we got a nice parabolic. Uh, way and of course we need to clean it up so for example once it's well, falling below the view we say like hey kill it and we do kind of a similar thing for the slash basically once the animation the slash animation uh, runs out we kill it also and so basically we got no leftover instances on the screen Alrighty, so this is where we left off. A little bit of housekeeping, of course we don't need to do that, but I guess it's neat so you can follow me. So we got our objects, let's get rid of our enemies, at least here, so it looks a little bit neater. Once again, go away, we just, we just need the player, and then we're gonna create a few objects. So one object, a second one, and a third one, but not here, like this. What are they? Basically uh, three, and um, then of course you can uh, mix, uh, mix and match the way you like. First of all, we need a, we need a object weapon parent. This is kind of important because later on we will pass in some uh, details and then all of them, the children will inherit that of course. And of course we want our hammer. Basically this is the axe from well, vampire survivors and then of course we want our slash not the hammer uh, slash and for now uh, the object parents is pretty much alone so let's give it some children so we just get go plus and then add you and add you and then basically we can close it because we're not going to use it for now and of course they look kind of silly because they are empty uh, instances so therefore let's give them some nice looking sprites so this one is getting the hammer and this one is getting the slash so here we go and then of course a little thing for example it's I guess a good way to center your slash and your weapons in the middle center so it's easier to read that out same for our uh, player which is centered in the middle and then we just say like hey to the right or to the left let's spawn our slash so the first thing which we want to do is kind of establish a system where we spawn things. So let's go and do that into our player. Normally you would do that externally, but let's keep it easy. So let's have two events which I'm going to get triggered by alarm. So why do I do that? Because these alarms have kind of slot positions. And then after that, we just say like, hey, uh, we are on this slot, then trigger. At, uh, at the alarm so when the alarm is getting triggered then trigger uh, well, a specific event so let's go event zero this one I guess is the easiest one we just create a slash and then boom and one little thing which uh, you need to know for example if you for example did something like this which is possible by the way then the game will crash <laughs> because we are doing depth sorting so therefore it needs to go on the specific instances because uh, once the player is getting depth sorted into a specific depth, then it cannot uh, grab the temporal layer and then game over for the whole game. So the first thing which we want to do here is then create our slash and then of course on the second event, create our axe. And of course, as you can see, 
uh, there are multiple ways how you can uh, establish such a system but this is i guess a pretty easy one and then we can have a maximum of uh, 16 so zero is counted with 16 weapons and of course you can have different kind of uh, other uh, auxiliary ones and helper ones and hp which don't need to be triggered so therefore um, this is still quite flexible as it stands and now what we're going to do is have a system which is based on alarms which are just running down and then after the time run runs down we gonna do something for that let's go into our create events and then basically just have two timers and the interesting part is for example um, we these things should loop so let's create our alarm zero and then we can just copy paste this alarm so zero and with this timer of 80 so basically every uh, second and then later on for example once we kind of slot uh, or change the weapons we could just change the variable and then we have kind of a different uh, timer running down so this is that's why i do this so loop boom and then of course do the same thing for our second alarm loop also and therefore i just give them uh, one thing and then for now well basically nothing is happening so this is kind of terrible <laughs> so let's go and say like hey user events event user i always mess that up sorry my bad and then for example once the alarm is down and then looping we create our event zero which was creating the weapon slash and then of course we can do the same thing for alarm one and create for now and create a weapon but for example once we started um this is not very satisfying to be honest as you can see and we are creating uh permanently as uh, sticking around instances not very satisfying in my opinion so let's give those guys some uh, life so the first thing let's go into our user event one which is our axe or hammer hammer time here we go hammer and then let's give it some properties so we are flying so the hammer needs a few things so first of all let's go with a speed value of four so we are flying um well quite fast then next thing what what we need is basically we give it some gravity so it's basically parabolically falling down so gravity is 0.1 and then of course this is optional give it some friction so the uh, flying part is getting so the speed is getting reduced over time so 0 0.01 something like that but of course we need a start direction where to fly to so we just go hammer dot direction and then once again upwards direction is in between so i random or just random range if you like doesn't really matter between 45 and 135 so for quick explanation these are once again 0 90 and then for example that means if you go between 45 to 135 Five, hopefully this is readable from one point this is basically here to here so basically you got the whole um, kind of range upwards so this is the whole idea behind it and that's what we're gonna do and then for example now we give it more life than it deserves and of course let's tune it up a little bit because why not we need to give it some spinning so let image angle of course you can refine the system if you like plus equals let's go for 10 and then of course we want to get rid of it once it is well outside of our view so this is our view zero we just say like hey add events other where are your views outside view zero and then we just say instance destroy once again <laughs> destroy here we go so let's start it and as you can see we are triggering our thing which is pretty good and then for example 
the whole X is flying upwards parabolically, it's spinning and it's deleting once it is outside here. And let's do the uh, good part for the slash. So this is our last part. Let's go into our slash. So first of all, we want to destroy it after it's animated. So animation end, so other animation end. Then once again, instance destroy. So destroy because we want, don't want it to be all the time here. And then of course we need to follow the player. Here it's a little bit tricky because we don't want to be on the center of the player all the time. You could do it, but eh, this doesn't look too good. So therefore we need to do, this is of course optional, uh, create a variable. I just call it add x. Did I call it like this? Uh, yeah, I call it add x, which is basically at the start a zero value. So this has no uh, news for us, but oh, come on. <laughs> but it is basically just saying like, hey, my x is basically the same as our object players x. Here we go. Plus this value, of course, for now basically doing nothing and then we kind of do a similar thing for the y value so basically it is kind of following the player even though it's very very shortly around oh, um, then we want it to follow it and so it looks better so let's close it because we don't need it anymore and let's uh, once for example once we create the slash let's go slash here we go then we add this value. So how can we distinguish how we how much do we want to add? Because let's make this a little bit visual. So let's say we got our player here. Where is where's Mr. Slash? Oh, did I write? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that. Here we go. So let's get rid of the drawing. So let's say you got your thing here. And for example, if you would spawn it in the middle, it would be here. Uh, not looking good. You maybe want to do it a little bit up front and of course on this side or up front also. So what we do, we just change the image X scale accordingly where our player has uh, sw swapped the image X scale also. But of course we are adding now this extra add X value. So basically a few pixels to the right or to the left. So how do we do it? Well, we just say like, hey, the first of all image x scale of our slash is the same as the player which is then easy peasy to do so basically if the player is flipped we will flip also but then of course we're saying like hey let's apply that knowledge also to our own so basically we're just saying like hey if the image x scale of the player is one so if he's facing to the right Let's add 15 pixels to the right. And then for example, if the player is pointing to the left, so it hits its image X scale is minus one. Let's go minus 15. And then we are pretty much finished. So let's check this out and let's see. So we're walking around and then this thing is walking around with us also. Sweet. And of course, if you like, you can increase the timers and then we are one step closer to make a weapon system so let's actually do this let's make this annoyingly fast uh, we are 20 and here <laughs> uh, 15 yeah this will be kind of spammy doesn't really matter because we can do it why not so let's see how that looks like shotgun <laughs> so as you can see working pretty beautifully and of course um, this is what you want to have later for the game. Alrighty, that was it from my side and see you in the next video tutorial. Have a good one. One up indie.